Many of us would pay top dollar for a pill that would enhance our ability to remember. But we found a scientist who was far more excited about a pill that promises to do exactly the opposite. If there were something you could take after experiencing a painful or traumatic event that would permanently weaken your memory of what had just happened, would you take it? It's an idea that may not be so far off and that has some critics alarmed and some trauma victims filled with hope. I couldn't get my body to stop shaking. I was trembling, constantly trembling, and memories of it would just come back, reoccurring over and over and over. Beatrice Arguedas is a subway conductor. Last September 30th, she was driving her normal route on the red line in Boston when one of her worst fears came to pass. Upon entering one of the busiest stations, a man jumped in front of my train to commit suicide. Entering Park Street. You actually saw him jump. I saw him jump. We sort of made eye contact, and then I felt the thud from him hitting the train, and then the crackling sound underneath the train. And then, of course, my heart starts thumping. She came into our, into, into our emergency room afterwards very upset, no physical injury, entirely a psychological trauma. Dr. Roger Pittman is a psychiatrist at Harvard Medical School who has studied and treated patients with post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, for 25 years. They're caught up so much with this past event that's constantly in their mind. They're living it over and over and over as it's happening again, and they just can't get involved in real life. When Beatrice arrived in the emergency room, Pittman enrolled her in an experimental study of a drug called propranolol, a medication commonly used for high blood pressure and unofficially for stage fright. Pittman thought it might do something almost magical, trick Beatrice's brain into making a memory of the event she had just experienced. In the study that is still underway, half the subjects get propranolol, half get placebo. Do you know whether she got the drug? No idea. You have no idea? We have no idea, and she has no idea. To this day? We won't well, know for another two years. If Pittman is right, the results could fundamentally change the way accident victims, rape victims, even soldiers are treated after they experience trauma. The story begins with some surprising discoveries about memory. It turns out our memories are sort of like jello. They take time to solidify in our brains. And while they're setting, it's possible to make them stronger or weaker. It all depends on the stress hormone adrenaline. The man who discovered this is James McGaw, a professor of neurobiology at the University of California, Irvine. McGaw studies memory in rats, and he invited us to watch the making of a rat memory. In this case, how a rat, who's never been in this tank of water before, learns how to find a clear plastic platform just below the surface. Well, he'll swim around randomly. Oh, can he not, not see the platform? No, he can't see the platform. His eyes are on the top of his head. The rat will swim around the edge for a long time until eventually he ventures out and by chance bumps into the platform. The next day, he'll find the platform a little bit faster. But watch this rat who learned where the platform was yesterday, then received a shot of adrenaline immediately afterward. Notice that it starts out not on the edge. Oh! There you oh, go. Oh, that's impressive. Adrenaline actually made this rat's brain remember better, and McGaw believes the same thing happens in people. Suppose I said to you, you know, I've, I've watched your programs uh, a lot over the years, and although I, it pains me to have to tell you this, uh, I think you're one of the worst people I've ever seen on, on now don't take it, don't take it personally. So I'd, my stress system would go into overdrive, no even, question. Even with my telling you that it's not true, and there's nothing to keep you from blushing, from feeling warm all over. I am warm all over. Yeah. I am, that's, no joke. That's really. the adrenaline. And I dare say that you're going to remember my having said that long after you've forgotten the other details of our discussion here. I guarantee it. McGaw says that's why we remember important and emotional events in our lives more than regular day-to-day -day experiences. The next step in his research was to see what would happen when adrenaline was blocked. He started experimenting with propranolol. Propranolol sits on that nerve cell and blocks it so that, think of this as being a key and this is a lock, 
the hole in the lock is blocked because of propranolol sitting there. So adrenaline can be present, but it can't do its job. Watch this rat, which just yesterday learned where the platform was, then received an injection. Today, he just swims around the edge as if he's forgotten there ever was a platform out there. Across the country at Harvard, Roger Pittman read McGaugh's studies, and a light bulb went on. When I read about this, I said, this has got to be how post-traumatic stress disorder works. Because think about what happens to a person. First of all, they have a horribly traumatic event, and they're, they have intense fear and helplessness. So that intense fear and helplessness is going to stimulate adrenaline. And then what do we find three months or, or six months or 20 years later? Excessively strong memories. Pittman figured he could block that cycle by giving trauma victims propranolol right away before adrenaline could make the memories too strong. He started recruiting patients for a small pilot study. One of the first was Kathleen Logue, a paralegal who had been knocked down in the middle of a busy Boston street by a bicyclist. We just hit the whole left side. Um, and it seems like forever that I was laying in the middle of State Street, downtown Boston. And you must have been scared. Yeah, terrified that it was just going to get run over. Right Murray, Murray. As part of the study, Kathleen took propranolol four times a day for 10 days. Like the others who got the drug, three months later, she showed no physiological signs of PTSD, while several subjects who got a placebo did. Those results got Pittman funding for a larger study by the National Institutes of Health. But then the President's Council on Bioethics condemned the study in a report that said our memories make us who we are and that rewriting memories pharmacologically risks undermining our true identity. This is a quote. It risks making shameful acts seem less shameful or terrible acts less terrible than they really are. A terrible act? Why should you have to live with it every day of your life? It doesn't erase the fact that it happened. It doesn't erase your memory of it. It makes it easier to remember and function.